This one is called a comprehensive guide to anime reviews, guys. Y'all know who it is. It's Lunar Equinox, right? He makes a lot of great videos like this. Go give him a like on the video, sub to his channel if you haven't. Let's see what he has to say about anime reviews. In the beginning, there was nothingness, but then the universe was created, to yeah. which the first creatures responded with, Eh, the world building's kind of mid. <laughs> Their actions, of course, had consequences. So you think that you have a bad- <laughs> World building mid by dinosaurs? Okay, that was kind of funny. Valid opinion on anime that you want to put out into the world. Bald- <laughs> No, you don't. Luckily for you, I created a comprehensive guide to help you understand the complex subject that are anime reviews. Let's start yeah. with why someone would want to review anime. Perhaps Money? Why would someone make a fucking video on YouTube? For fun? Yeah, of course. But like, clearly, you know, the anime review game, like if you're on YouTube, you're making content about it, you're trying to get it, you know, get the views for monetary purpose for something that you're passionate about, right? Perhaps you want to start an intellectual conversation between- No, you don't! Listen, when I make content, you know, I never read comments. I never, I glance, whenever I do an anime reaction, then motherfucker is coming to my video trying to give me extra dialogue and context and have a conversation. It's just like, no, because first of all, people don't even know what a spoiler is. And then it's just like a bunch of pseudo intellectual neckbeards trying to like flex their extra knowledge of an anime and typing really condescending shit. It's just like, I don't think there's any of, you know, uh, intellectual conversations to be had. It's just a bunch of fucking neckbeards trying to ego stroke each other. Between like-minded individuals, not realizing that it was simply devolved into the equivalent Power of an scaling. elementary school fight. Maybe you want that sweet, sweet raid Shadow Legends money. Or possibly someone told you that you have a great sense of humor. <laughs> Discord kitten. Hi. Please be my Discord kitten, ooh, I am on my knees, haha, <laughs> you have such a great sense of humor, uh, I'll bet a $5,000 that this is a guy. Sense of humor. Catfish! <laughs> no you don't. But regardless, you decide to bring your family great shame by reviewing what they call children's cartoons. The first thing you need to decide is how will you review anime? If you make a single joke during your review, congratulations, yeah. you're officially a Giga clone. Well, I think that there's, from all the different, you know, anime reviews that I farm by reacting to them, I have noticed that there are some subcategories, right? For sure, there is the giggle types where they're trying to review, but it's always trying to engage the audience by cracking some jokes to have some sort of humor. And then there's the other category where it's just purely analytical and they don't really do any jokes. I think that jokes sometimes, if executed well and done in like a decent way, it definitely has a place and it can do better. But sometimes the joke falls flat, and sometimes people don't understand that they're being cringe, and it turns people off. So a safe way, I guess, for anime reviews is to kind of stick with the analytical side of it. Um, I like to think that I'm my own individual, completely different from- Shut up, Dollar Tree Giguk. <laughs> Come back when you have subscribers. The speed reviewer- how many subs does he have? 79k is nothing to laugh at, that's a lot of subs. ...is known for pumping out more videos than there are pending anime domestic abuse cases. <laughs> Every time there's a new chapter, a new yeah. episode, they have a review out within 2 milliseconds of- Just to show you who a speed reviewer is. I know who. My man, A H Brandon Reviews! Bro is so quick with that man! And I'm not looking at the thumbnails to avoid spoilers right now, but like, guys, go give him some love. If you like, if you, if you want topics on like seasonal animes, if you want the most recent episode of most seasonal animes, this guy's channel covers that shit so well, so fast. ...of its release. A performance only rivaled by your performance during No Nut November. They're able to do this since they don't heavily script out their videos, typically just turning on... Yeah, and like... Here's the thing, right? I think that if you script your videos, right? Uh, the, the thing about the YouTube is, it's all about scalability. Meaning, H. Brandon, I don't think really scripts as hard as other people. So he's able to create a, such a huge volume of work. But this isn't to disrespect him, but if he were to script harder, then I think that the dialogue and the things that he's trying to say would be much more fleshed out and well thought out and have a deeper conversations per video. But that doesn't necessarily mean more views. In a business sense, it's kind of in your best interest to mass produce by being able to improv and have short talking points and talk about the anime episode at hand. But 
That is a very interesting topic. I think Mr. B says the most important thing is just making a good video, right? You can pump out 10 videos, but if they get 1,000 views each, then you only get 10,000. But if you had one video that you scripted and did it really well, then you would have 10,000. Everyone has different business strategies and, you know, content strategies and what to do. Personally, like, being a reactor, I don't have to do any scripts, right? I just fucking improv. But if I was a YouTube reaction channel, uh, sorry, re review channel, I think I would approach it age branding style while I have, like, specific talking points and just try to scale up as many videos as possible rather than focusing on, like, really big scripts for big projects. On the camera and talking. God, I wish that was me. Then you have deep dive reviewers who release a video once every three months, leaving you and gets a million views. Questioning if they died every other week. These individuals study every pixel, every yeah. frame, possessing an ability that was thought lost to time, finding more meaning in nothing than your high school English teacher. Everything has a deep meaning. Yeah. Monster Musume is a compelling story about racism. Dragon Maid is about not letting your family define who you are. And sure. Baruto deeply depicts a story of why you should always wear a condom. Now, deep divers. <laughs> is Baruto the bad? No, jokes aside, the deep diving content reviews, I think, are fantastic, right? What I really like on YouTube sometimes, yeah, I like to have my concise, quick reviews, like 8 to 10 minute reviews on the episode content. But sometimes I like to check out videos and like, you know, it's like a whole breakdown of this like genre of like Eminence and Shadow and like the, like, like for, there's like a channel called Series of Zap that does like psychology of anime characters and he had like a whole deep dive of like the mentality between Sid Kagino and why he acts that way, right? This is a well thought out scripted video and usually those kind of videos has a, they get more views compared to like, you know, improv videos because maybe just because it has such a bigger substance compared to the mass scalable videos are not to be confused with theorists. While deep divers use facts and logic to back up their claims, theorists use a more trustworthy source. My what? source is that I made it Me. the fuck up. When you were a kid watching cartoons, if you ever thought to yourself, I bet Winnie the Pooh would kick Mickey Mouse's ass, you have power scaling potential. Power okay. scalers take two characters and determine who would win in a battle. To who would win? Remember, call me can't communicate or butch the rock. Uh... Bochi has a guitar that she can hit Komi with, so I'm going with Bochi. And determine who would win in a battle, to which an absolute comedic genius responds with, He ain't beating Goku, not realizing that the only thing Goku beats is his it's wife. Despite it- <laughs> He did do that. He did do that. Honestly, I enjoy unironic power scaling, right? It's so fucking cringe. It is so fucking cringe when people actually try to power scale, like, unironically. They go in, like, purely thinking, like, yeah, Goku versus Saitama, they're actually having, like, a debate on YouTube comment section, pulling two separate characters that operate in two diff different ways and trying to get, like, an actual, like, scientific analysis on why people be who. But the type of power scaling that I really enjoy, remember that one, uh, what's it called? The podcast, Trash Taste, where Connor was talking about, you know, Bochi the Rock or Jujutsu Kaisen, and Connor said something so funny, where, well, shit. I haven't seen Bochi use domain expansion, right? This is what I'm talking about. Power, unironic, like, like sarcastic power scaling where they're just fucking memeing. I think that is the type of power scaling that I really enjoy. Wife, despite it being scientifically proven that you have a better chance of finding the end of Pi than changing the opinion of the Densimus Fandomus, many have tried, not realizing that- Densimus Mensimus. The average Unga Boonga power scaler right over here. If we look at, take a very close look at this, who is at the very top? Saitama. Uh, I'm gonna assume this is Goku and I don't know, the Dragon Ball characters. I see like Naruto here. This is like Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Some Yu Yu Hakusho characters. Yeah, where's the One Piece and Bleach at? There they are. They're on C tier though. Fandomus, many have tried, not realizing that all of power scaling can be broken down to a single quote by Stan Lee. Fuck you. Wait, if she ain't 3D, she ain't for me. Quote by Stan Lee. Fuck you. Wrong quote. I meant the person who'd win in a fight is the person that the scriptwriter wants to win. Translation. Okay. Fuck you. Finally, AIDS. I, I mean, React what? channels. To be a React. That's me! Here we go. React channels, the laziest form of content. I go live without a single thought in my head. I click a video, then I just talk over the guy talking in the video, and it's so easy. Channel, stick an anime in a tiny area on screen to avoid yeah. copyright, yeah. and say the following lines on repeat. No, I'm different. I'm different.
the reason that I started doing reaction channels is because I watched reaction channels back in the past. And all these lazy, boring motherfuckers during the things that I was excited for the most were just saying the most baseline, just bottom of the barrel, lowest hanging fruit reactions. Oh my God. Wow. I can't believe it. Peak. What? And I saw that shit. I'm like, no. Nah. The fans, I want something better. I want a dude to break down my favorite moments and talk about it with some fucking passion. That's why I did this shit. Because I'm like, no, too long has the YouTube anime reaction space suffered from fucking mid-reactions. I fucking went in there as a fucking messiah. I'm here to deliver you to paradise, to give you the reactions that it deserves. But... You know, uh, aside from being a narcissist Andy, I don't think that any... I think that a lot of reaction channels, some of them obviously are just very boring and just kind of just not saying shit, right? I think that I try to actually give a fuck. Facts. Oh my god, no way. Yeah. Okay, right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that true. Is so true. True. If you're a react channel, you yeah. probably just pause the video to react to that comment. Yes. Very cool. Yes. You know it. And then the best part, we gonna react to every other video of his. You could, of course, just post a well-articulated review on my anime list, just no. so people can scroll to the bottom to see the rating without reading the rest. Now that you've chosen how you will review anime, you must choose which. Anime and that's the thing, right? He stops at just reaction channels. But like, listen, I am an innovator, right? I understand how lazy reaction shit is. But I at least try to think of different ways to react. And while yes, reacting to anime is one form of anime reviews, what he fails to accommodate after that is me double dipping, reacting to other people's fucking reviews on the anime, and even getting more discussion out of that. No one is more shameless and as lazy than me in the anime reaction niche. Anime to review. Oh, I know. Just review what everyone else is reviewing. Heh. <laughs> No, you don't. You review whatever you're passionate about. If you're... Well, here's the thing about passion and YouTube. If you don't like what you're doing, then the content will simply speak for itself. You won't be energized, you won't be enthusiastic, and people will not watch you because it's mid-content. But at the same time, if you start making videos on random topics just because you're passionate about it and you don't have an idea of who your audience is, you lose the trust of the YouTube algorithm and it really, it really um, hinders your growth. So sometimes you need to have a delicate balance of what does my audience want and what am I passionate about? Find an overlap and try to farm that. If you're passionate about One Piece, make a thousand videos about One Piece. If Pecking you're passionate about the GOAT. Right? And this is the thing, right? If you're passionate about One Piece, just make a thousand videos about One Piece. This is actually true because, obviously, if you're trying to get into one specific niche, then you stick to that and you continue to deliver on it. I totally agree. Teching 101. I used to watch this guy during Bleach times, bro. Did you know that Teching was actually not, you know, just like a One Piece channel? Bro, he was, a, he was the Bleach guy, right? And... He has such great enthusiasm for the content. Many people think that he's cringe. Many people think that he's just some weirdo. And maybe there is some truth to that. But people can see how authentic and genuine he is. And even though he is the cringe lord, people love that about him. And in fact, that becomes his community. That becomes his brand. And that's why he gets so many views. And that's why his YouTube career is so good and not riddled with drama. A lot of people really, really respect Tekken. Me included. Peace. If you're passionate about Berserk, I am so sorry. Now it's time to watch the anime in two times. Because <laughs> the anime sucks. Do the manga reviews then. Do you know? Don't do the anime reviews. Speed, because you have deadlines to meet. No, oh, wait, what did you say? 2x speed? Hold up. Sorry. Now it's time to watch the anime in two times speed. Giga, I will never forgive you for the swing 2024 anime reaction, you know, anime, you know, poll where you put Windbreaker. No, he, the Windbreaker rating was fine. It was just a logic that it took to get there. Fucking two times anime react. <laughs> Listen, I get it, right? You guys are busy. It's your fucking job. I get it. You got different things to do. Because you have deadlines to meet, but at the same time, writing down notes of everything you think of. Although this may sound like it ruins the enjoyment of watching anime. It does. To create a great script, you only need to ask yourself one question. How the hell can I stretch out talking about some guy getting cucked for eight minutes? So you gotta just be able to yap. 
I don't know. Like, do you really need to do 2x speed to get as much information as possible to make an anime review? Do you really? Isn't this kind of counterproductive? Like, how is it possible that, like, if you are watching at 2x speed, you're going to be missing out on shit. You're not going to fully understand what's going on. You're not going to be able to fully experience what other people are experiencing. And you won't be able to make content that's relatable to them. While you may be able to get concise notes by watching 2x speed and comp out, you know, a video essay about that anime. Like, I just... Is it really the most optimal way? I don't do anime reviews. And obviously, Giga, he's got that shit figured out. But really, is, is that really the only way? Or is he just being lazy? yourself one question how the hell can i stretch out talking about some guy getting cucked for eight minutes yeah you want to see something even crazier you want to see something even crazier lunar equinox you're <laughs> here let me show you something even crazier okay <laughs> remember your video about isekai guide remember your video about the isekai guide that shit was like eight minutes i farmed your video and it became a 39 minute 08 second video. Because I am the king of yapping. React Messiah. Almost 40 minutes. I nearly fucking 4X'd. 4X'd his fucking content. Because I <laughs> just yap. Circumlocution can help you do this by using grandiloquent words to sound more perspicacious and less arid. This trick can make you appear as though you aren't talking about a guy who gains strength from the power of boobs, when in reality, you're talking about a guy who gains strength from the power of boobs. How ah, uh, yes, this character gains such powerful momentum by caressing the voluptuous endowment of Rias Gremory. Yeah, if you, I guess if you fucking talk in a different accent with you big words, you can make a sound not degenerate, sure. ...about a guy who gains strength from the power of boobs, when in reality, you're talking about a guy who gains strength from the power of boobs. Yeah. However, it's still important to get your point across, which can be done by over-exaggerating. For example, the animation isn't just nice. Every frame was handcrafted <laughs> to perfection, giving eye-gasms to all who see it. The voice mm -hmm. actress wasn't just good. Her voice sounded like a majestic <laughs> goddess doing ASMR directly into my tympanic membrane. And you don't just... Honestly... That exaggeration has a layer of comedy to it, so I think that it is kind of funny, yeah. Like a character, the things I wouldn't do to be the sperm cell next- Okay, now you're just getting sus now. I don't know how old this girl is. ...to her racing her to the womb just to be close to her. But what about the actual content of the video? You're probably mm. thinking that you probably just say your opinion on the show bluntly. Heh, <laughs> no you don't. Many viewers watch reviews to validate their own opinion. Yes, and... This is the thing that a lot of people do. I'm not sure if Lunar Equinox is going to mention this, but there's a couple channels that intentionally rage bait because most of the time, there's like two, there's two types of videos, right? Sorry, there should be three. Let, let, me, let me partition a video essays into three sides, right? On the, the, what the normies do, right? Is what, not the actual channel normies, but what most, you know, anime reviewers does is they like to glaze the show, right? They say positive things about it. By doing that, you're going to attract an audience that loves that series. And then they're going to get positive affirmation from that. And they'll like the video and it gets good engagement. And then the other opposite polar is rage baiting, where people say controversial takes intentionally and may even say it in such an intellectually dishonest way to rile up the audience because happy people don't engage. Angry people with something to correct and something to say will comment and dislike. And yes, dislikes are a part of engagement. It still kind of sends good signals to the YouTube algorithm. And then there's people in the middle where they are neither glazing nor hating on it. Now it's just mid, and those videos are the ones that does really well. Bad, right? So you don't want to take, just give mid opinions and play it safe. You need to either fucking glaze that shit, lick it for all it got, or just hate that shit and make people mad as possible. Right? I think that there's a delicate way where you can do both, but often those channels that rage bait, it is a very short-sighted way. They see the initial short-term success, but at the end of the day, you're creating a community that actively hates you and is so toxic and there's no longevity in that career. So if you start out with how Dead Man Wonderland made me wish that, that I was, was a, a dead man, man, people will hear, I just murdered your entire family and default danced on their graves. But that creates this again, negative emotion that cr that people want to engage with the video it's gonna get more views a good reviewer is able to explain the flaws of something yeah so that the viewer sees your perspective right you want to break it down rather than just saying berserk is trash 
Sorry, not a different day. Rather than just saying, Frieden is a worse version of Black Clover, which makes no sense. You could break down the point and try to come up with a logical conclusion that an audience could maybe follow so that your hot take, they will understand how you got to that conclusion rather than just, you know, saying some volatile shit. In the errors of their ways, meaning that they only send some death threats. But after banging your head against a wall for multiple days, you finally have a script. So now it's time to grab your headset mm -hmm. mic and start recording. High Let's School go, of the gamers. Dead is the most revolutionary anime of our generation. Look I would lead in with that title, saying High School of the Dead is the most revolutionary anime of this generation, and then the revolutionary part would be the bullet physics as it carefully weaves between the thighs and the booba of Busujima Senpai. Right? That's a comical way. You rage bait, right? You say some heinous shit. You say something ridiculous. It's like, no, it's not revolution. What are you talking about? And then you give them a comical breakdown of what actually kind of could be revolutionary. And then see how I'm farming it, right? I'm farming both the hate. I, 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 I bait with the hate. And then they find that I'm funny. And then they're like, you know what? All right, you fucking got me. And, you know, that's how it all begins. Luckily, you probably have enough money to get a nice mic. Heh. <laughs> no, you don't. Fun fact. This mic, the Shure SM7B. I borrowed from work. And, uh, I'm no longer working anymore, so... You know? Just be yourself. A line people have told you your entire life. Yeah, that's a load of crap. You think when I'm not recording, I sound like this? No, I sound more like this. So yeah. when you're recording, try to... No, for sure, right? Even me. Well, right now, when I do commentary stuff, not like anime reactions. When I'm doing anime reactions, I think my voice gets a lot more high-pitched because I'm trying to get more energetic. Obviously, like, there's like, when you're on the cam, you want to be on the cam. You want to keep it en engaging, but you can kind of tell, like, when I'm talking just like this, like, my voice is like... Just more monotone because I'm trying to save energy for the anime reactions later. You sound entertaining and not like you're a flopping fish at a funeral. Have you ever sat down and thought, I sure do love sitting down for 16 hours a day, 7 yes. days a week, yes. Yes. listening to the sound of my own voice on repeat? Well, yes. boy, do I have a surprise for you. Welcome to editing hell. <laughs> Just hire an editor. What, you broke? Poor... No, I'm kidding. Me, when I was doing anime reaction by myself and without Sir Gregor, my editor. I kind of did hate listening to my voice over and over again. Like, sometimes I would laugh because like I actually said something funny. It's, it's I don't know. Part, I wonder if Sir Gregor feels that way. Sometimes he watches the fucking edits and he's like, <laughs> the fuck did he just say here? But it does. I remember in the beginning, it's like, this is weird. Listen to my voice like over and over again. It just gets fucking annoying. Sometimes I get mad at myself when I'm editing. Because I'm just like yelling and shouting. I'm like, shut the fuck up, idiot. I'm just trying to edit right now. Where you'll lose your time, sanity, and especially your will to live. But if you manage to climb out of editing hell, all that's left is to make a thumbnail. Mm. For the thumbnail, you probably think that you need an attention-grabbing main image, a high-quality background, yeah. and big text to get people to click on your video. I mean, that's what you do, right? Except, you know, the attention capturing image is usually a waifu and you get a bright, vibrant background and some kind of captivating captions that relays a message combined with the title, right? Video? Heh. <laughs> no, you don't. According to this graph that I <laughs> made up, more males watch anime reviews than females. Which I think that's just also just... Yeah. I think that a lot of the audience, like, you know, in my own analytics, right? Just like all videos, like 99% male, 1% female. Females, which is why I have one motto that I live by. Tits get clicks, but... Yep. Always, right? Every thumbnail is gonna be some waifu, right? You always gotta think about some waifu who is the most clickable, char clickable character. If that doesn't work, just add co completely finished with the review. You look back at all your hard work and think, man, I sure did a great job. Heh. <laughs> No, you don't. What? You will almost never feel content with any of the content you make, and- And that's a good thing, right? In any craft that you pursue, not just like YouTube anime reviews, not just YouTube, not- it, Just everything in life, anytime you're creating something, you should cringe at your old work. You should be your biggest criticizer, right? You should look at your past work and say, this shit was trash, I can be better, because if you're content with it, then I don't think you're being honest with yourself. You can always be better. My past reaction, I look at that shit, I'm like, you know, I think I can be better, right? So cringing at your old content, being dissatisfied, 
It just simply means that you're on the pursuit of perfection and that's what gives you fulfillment. And looking back at your old videos may result in the desire to jump into oncoming traffic. Jesus. You did it. You uploaded your first review. Now we wait for the views to pour in. Ah, uh, are the views gonna pour in? Well, if you're a guy like Lunar Equinox who's been doing this for what I'm assuming is a pretty decent time, yes. But, you know, the anime review space is extremely saturated, right? Anime reaction space is even more saturated. Anytime you have some sort of... Like, there is no... Like, there's no fucking barrier to entry, right? It's a very accessible thing. If you just have a fucking webcam, a shitty cam, like a shitty mic, anyone can just talk about anime and just upload their content online. And what that does is saturate the market, right? It saturates that niche. And then it becomes even more competitive. At the end of the day, if your content truly is good, it'll shine throughout later on. But just to think that you can simply give your own takes on an anime and it succeed immediately, Highly unlikely. It's just gonna take a long time to figure out a process and try to build a community off of it. In one eternity later. Yeah, it's not gonna get views, bro. Luckily for you, I have a trade secret if you're having a difficult time getting views. Just buy views like Mad Lot of Culture. Just do Fate Week, Month, or Year. Over time, you Wait, what? Just do Fate Week, Month, or Year? What? month or year over time you'll start getting comments which i'll translate for you now you're so underrated what 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 do you mean hold up hold up use just do fate week month or year just do fate week month or year where he covers fate content what is this take right now that if you over make if you make a fate video then it's going to do well because a fate community exists on youtube and you can top into that community and then build a, your own community off of it Time, you'll start getting comments, which I'll translate for you now. You're so underrated. Definitely gonna blow up soon. I <laughs> want to be able to say that I knew you before you got big. Great video. Loved every bit. I actually get so many comments like that, even before. And like, whenever I got these kind of comments, and like, no, I'm not ego stroking myself. You can simply go to the videos and check for those comments. There's a new guy saying like, bro, you should get like 10 million fucking subs. You're grinding so hard. Here, like, like okay, just to prove that i am not an ego andy right let's go to my own comment section here i'll pull it up okay 10 mil there's a guy no no i'll find it i'll find it trust me i'll find it i'm not crazy i'm not crazy okay 10 where i'm gonna seem like i'm crazy if i can't fucking find this I will fucking find it right now. I'm, I'm looking crazy right now. You know what the video it was? I, up, I upload too many goddamn fucking videos, so it's hard to see. You know what video it was? Fuck. I'm, I'm actually looking crazy right now. It might have been one of the videos that I saw I uploaded yesterday. I'm not crazy, okay? No, I'm not a narcissist. I, I am a narcissist. But uh, hold up. It, it might be one of these videos. Let's see it. All right. Let's look at the comments here. Oh, shit. There's too many fucking comments. There's too many fucking comments. Okay, wasn't Friday. this one? <laughs> was it this one? Oh, shit. Where is it? I'm actually looking fucking insane right now. Is it this one? Oh, uh, no, 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 it's not that. Okay, no, 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 I got it, 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 I got it. Boom. One example, okay, I'm not crazy. One example. It's happened a lot. Bro is grinding YouTube right now, not gonna lie, you need 10 million subs, you're like a crazy good YouTuber, okay? I'm just, just to fucking protect me from Delulu, not a paid actor, no. I have a bunch more comments like this. But the point that I'm trying to get at is, whenever I see these comments, I don't necessarily feel good about myself. Because what that does is give me hope. And it could be a delusion, right? If my content truly was that good, then I would simply have result and grow. And I think I am growing. I think that we are growing at a pretty significant rate right now. Whenever I see those comments, it's just like, 
it makes me honestly feel a little bit bitter like shit you people actually think that i i am actually that goaded but i'm not getting the views that people think that i deserve or whatnot it's like whatever none of that shit fucking matters i see that and i say whatever i simply put my head down and i grind the content that people want to watch and one of these days we'll t with enough time everything will just settle itself but yeah don't let it get to your head don't let it get to your head but yeah six minutes and 43 seconds now, right now. oh yeah there's a lot of these comments too there are so many fucking neckbeards, and the worst part is, during my fucking reactions, I pause to, like, talk, say something, and quite often I'll correct myself about two minutes later, but these fucking retards will just post time steps, it's like, actually, this is wrong, and then a couple minutes later, they get corrected, and like, oh, I see you already typed that, it's just like, just shut the fuck up and just watch the video, but, like, it's also not in my best interest to immediately just, like, you know, shit on them. I just don't read the comments. I know that people think that they're so smart and they think that they're going to correct me and do that. Whatever. I don't care. You're all just fucking statistic to me at the end of the day. You're going to, you know, do those engagement. Say whatever the fuck you want, right? But if you're going to be rude and say some heinous shit, then I'll just fucking block you. But it's just like, yeah, there's so many people that's just like, hm, actually, you're not understanding the enemy as it's supposed to be. You know, even the, if the author didn't say it, I have my own personal opinion. That's happening a lot in Dangers in My Heart right now. Bro, the amount of people backseating me about Dangers in My Heart, even though I am literally, may, I may not be getting 100% of things. But goddamn, I fucking pause at every point section and try to fucking understand the logic and most of the times I'm right. And then motherfuckers go on and say, like, <laughs> actually, even though the manga didn't say this, I think that this is how it's supposed to be interpreted. Like, shut the fuck up, you turbo nerd. You're so happy that like, you know so much about middle school romance. You should be in the fucking FBI watch register. I'm not reading all that. Yep. The manga is better. I am better. The light novel is better. It's almost like more words means more detail. I love these kind of comments though. The moment that people start like baiting like, oh, manga was better. These comments, I don't delete. I don't block. Because I know a fire is about to start. This comment is about to have like 50 replies throughout the next day. And that just boosts engagement. The best thing you can do for engagement is to make people angry and for other people to fight amongst themselves. No, my waifu better. No, my waifu better. I can't believe you said this shit. I'm like, I'm like, yep, just keep doing it. Let's go. I'm just eating popcorn and being like, yep, just keep going, boys. Manga is better. I am better. The light novel is better. It's almost like more words means more details. The visual novel is better. This is a cry for help. You've done it. <laughs> You're a super famous anime reviewer. Wow. Now for by far the most difficult challenge an anime reviewer faces. What? Do not touch children. Although yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty obvious. So this may sound like an extremely simple task. Oh no, it, it's whenever you get success, right? People for some reason always starts talking with their community members who are underage, and then grooming happens. How many times has that happened? Ask any tubers have a history of having a difficult time doing this. It's not just any tubers. It's pretty much just like any fucking big YouTuber, any content creator, any streamer. They get big, they have a community, there's underage people, fans that wants to talk to the content creator, and then the DMs gets fucking evil. That's why, that's why I don't talk to you retards in chat in Discord. Like, I will never send any of you a DM. Well, unless it's for like that one specific example for a refund. It's like, I, nope, squeaky clean. I'm not touching any of that shit. You, you monkeys can go talk amongst yourself on Discord, but be very careful of DMs. You don't know who each other are at the end of the day. It's very all anonymous, and there's a lot of bad actors at play. For example, recently there was a case of a power scaling YouTuber who allegedly had relations with a minor. And in situations like this, you only need to ask yourself, does the judge solo? But after all of your hard yes. work, you finally make enough money to live off your hobby. <laughs> No, you yeah. don't. Hello, Outro Tutorial Lunar here. Although, Hello. you don't need an outro because 90% of your audience clicks off the moment it's- Yeah, as soon as, like, this video started playing, you know, it clicks off. But I'll watch it! Starts playing. To do an outro, simply say, click here to check out my channel. Yes. Click here to check out the recommend. And what you want to do during the outros, this is what's called a call to action, right? What is a call to action? You tell somebody things to do. So, for example, what do I always do at the end of a reaction? If you're still here, and if you enjoyed the reaction, Please like the video, that's one call to action. And check out the other playlist for even more content. Two call to action, right? Keep it simple. Quite a lot of times, people say like, Oh, don't forget to sub, like, leave a comment, check out the Patreon, check out the Discord, check out this, check out the Twitch, check out the... And, and, and it overloads 
too many people, right? It's counterproductive. You keep it simple and concise. One or two things, you know, like the video, check the playlist. That's all you have to do. Or else people are like, what the fuck? 